Welcome to the uh, Camera Ambassador Red Komodo camera demo. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Pop a squat, kick your feet up, get a drink, get some chips. Uh, we're going to get started shortly here. Uh, Eric, are you cool if I take my mask off? I am, yeah. I'm, I'm cool, cool too, if you yeah. take yours off as well. Back in action. Back right. in action. Um, okay, so Eric, uh, could you tell us a little bit about, first off, I guess introductions are important too. Uh, my name's Austin Taylor, I'm the creative director, and I also work in marketing, and uh, sometimes as a technician here at Camera Ambassador. And I'm Eric, I am the lead tech here, you'll see me here pretty much every day. That is true, that Eric doesn't leave. He <laughs> actually, actually, I do here. live here. <laughs> I sleep under this crap. <laughs> so, um, tell us a little bit about, like, um, what is a crash camera and kind of like why was the Komodo developed as like a supplementary tool to another red? Yeah, so I mean the Komodo is, it's definitely being marketed as a crash camera straight from red. Um, you can see it's this tiny, it's a 4x4 four four inch cube. Uh, it's the smallest camera red's ever made. Um, I mean if you've seen movies like Mad Max is a great example where they just had cameras mounted everywhere and they used like a bunch of 5Ds because 5Ds are like incredibly cheap now and you can just put them on somewhere and if it gets destroyed that's fine no problem obviously it's a little bit more expensive than a 5d but it's the same kind of effect as where you can kind of just take this camera and put it in some weird spot that you'd never put an alexa x s x x s x t there you go there we go <laughs> a lot of letters there um you know it's a small camera that you can put in places that you couldn't fit other cameras but you can kind of put it in a spot that maybe it's going to get destroyed um, and as long as you've got this little 4K SDI port in the back here, you can just run that signal somewhere else and just record it elsewhere, and then boom, you got your footage and your camera's destroyed. So what would be some of the benefits of like using this as opposed to like a GoPro or a more traditional like compact camera? Yes, yeah, so, I mean the main thing with this is you do get a 6K Super 35 sensor and you get all of Red's lovely color science, which has been great. Um, I think they just came out with a dynamic range test and it was around 15 stops which is far more than a GoPro is ever going to have. That's very true. Um, I guess you also don't have that like warped um, optical yeah. perspective too. Yeah, you can actually GoPro. change lenses on this. With GoPro, you're just stuck on that weird wide. You can always tell it's a GoPro. Sure. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of though, what kind of like lenses, what mounting options are available? Yeah, for so what's cool with this guy is it's actually a native Canon RF mount um, by default, which is Canon's new, they're kind of doing away with EF and going to this RF mount. Uh, mainly because EF was impossible to adapt to really anything. Um, RF mount is a shorter flange distance, so you can therefore adapt to EF, which we have just a good old RF to EF adapter on here. By default, ships with the camera, um, but you can also adapt this RF to PL. Um, probably some other ones, I don't know yet. They're, it's still so fresh that they're still coming out with things. But Is this the fancy one with the, with the built-in ND? Let's just show out that one a bit. This is really cool. So this is uh, a lens mount, another uh, RF lens mount, but it has a built-in ND slider, basically. So yes. the so Komodo does not have any built-in NDs. Um, however, this type of mount can solve that um, by just putting in this, like, uh, what do you call those? The it's a, it's a drop-in variable ND. Variable ND, there we go, yeah. 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 So it's kind of, it's not the most perfect solution. Um, when you do go to like full ND, there's a heavy color shift that's mm. pretty much unusable. But the fact that there is any sort of variable ND that you can throw on this tiny little camera, because the whole point of this camera is to keep it small, and if you're putting a map box on the front, you're kind of ruining that purpose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just this cool little EF to RF with a built-in variable ND. I tested it out a little bit this weekend, and it's solid. I mean, the fact that you don't have to add rods or even just a clip-on mat box is mm -hmm. great. Now, some people complain about um, the media management when it comes to RED since it's so like proprietary. Yeah. So what type of media do we have with the Komodo yeah, here? Yeah, so that's what's great with this is there's actually just this little slot over here for a CFast card. Look at that, CFast, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, RED kind of moved away from proprietary on this, and I, it's, it's great. Um, it's nice to see that you don't have to buy the mini mags, which are like t almost two grand a piece for anything that makes sense. Right, right. Um, yeah, just one little CFast slot here. It's pretty simple. Um, uh, on a 512 gigabyte card, you'll get about 37 minutes in full 6K raw. Oh, okay. Um, which is pretty solid, but you can shoot ProRes on this camera too mm. to keep your file sizes down if you don't need to do heavy color grading and stuff like that. Obviously, one of the benefits of RAW is that you can change everything in post, your white balance, your ISO, all that stuff. You can just 
fix it in post. Always. Which everyone Always. loves to hear on set. <laughs> um, so with this, it's cool. You can shoot ProRes, and it about triples your amount of cards uh, recording time on this on a 512 gig card. So not nice. pretty solid. That's exciting. Yeah, and uh, with so it does shoot Red Raw by default, but you can switch it to ProRes. Um, Red Raw, they've switched to now. It's just instead of like your three to one, five to one, eight to one compression ratios, like they always did. They kept it simple. They just have high quality, medium quality, and low quality, mm. and that's what you get to choose from. Nice. So it's pretty nice. And there is a conversion chart out there. It's like high quality is like your three to one, something like that. But mm -hmm. either way, it really you have a lot of options that you're not just eating up card space on this camera, which is great. Right. Right. Uh, and we're just going to be kind of rambling off of specs and uh, accessories and builds and ideas here, but if you have any questions, just please put them into the comments, and then our technical director, Connor, who's hanging out behind the scenes, uh, will hey. let us know and put them up on screen, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about this particular build. Um, all right, well, speaking of the build, though, let's like start putting some stuff on here. Let's start yeah, kitting so it out. I, by default, right now, I just have the... We got the wooden camera accessories kit on it, which... Uh, Pretty solid. It has this base plate, which actually rises up to be the correct height for 15 mil, um, like map boxes and stuff like that. Otherwise, nothing would work. And um, a couple uh, nuanced parts about this body here is this red will accept any of the DSMC2 line of accessories. Uh, so if you have a DSMC2 monitor, your touch monitor, any of those, those will all mount directly onto here and communicate with the camera seamlessly. Um, there's not many mounting options, unfortunately. However, in our kit, we do provide you with a camera cage that's going to come with all of your quarter 20 and 3 8 adapters to kind of build out whatever accessories you might want to put on this camera. Uh, but as the stripped down version, not many mounting options. Uh, but we're happy to yeah, provide you with all these different yeah. Uh, cages. Yeah, and obviously this is such a new camera, people are still coming out with accessories for it. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm staying on the lookout for anything new that might be really beneficial. Right now we've got this wooden camera kit, which I, I do really like a lot. Uh, main thing is it has this little top plate here, which I'll throw on, and this kind of gives you a bunch of options from here. So it's got this, it's called an Arca Swiss style mount, um, basically just a sliding mount, which you can throw a top handle onto. There we go. Um, the only downside of putting this top handle on here is that you completely lose use of your monitor on top here which is your entire interface with the camera. Yes, yes, so that is one of the downsides of kind of the maneuverability of this camera body is that the monitor is built into the top of the camera. Um, it's just affixed to the top plane. There's gonna be no articulating uh, monitor motion whatsoever. So we definitely recommend pairing it with an external monitor um, or like I said earlier, if you have any of the DSMC2 red monitors themselves, those would be really helpful to use to help you kind of navigate through this Kind of strange, uh, but I understand why. You gotta keep the build small, keep it compact, um, but still kind of a strange uh, display setup here. Uh, and then, yeah, like Eric said, as soon as you put the top handle on, you start to kind of lose some of this uh, uh, ease of access here. Um, so, we're gonna throw on five inch monitors, is probably all we need. Uh, seven inch might be a little too much of an overkill for this type of camera, yeah. um, but just any of our, seven, or our five inch lines with the 502, the 502 light. Uh, any of our five inch high bright monitors, those will all work. We're gonna be demoing it with a small HD monitor today, but we also have a t uh, five inch TV logic uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, what's cool about this wooden camera kit is yeah, you've got this like sliding top handle that you can put on. Um, and then from here, you can throw, it's got this nice little like 15 mil rod mount thing. I forget exactly what they call it, but essentially it just, you mount it to the monitor and it just, when you loosen the proper screws, it slides right on there, and you've got this articulating monitor right That here. is very convenient. Oh, okay, so yeah, the mount, okay, so if you, well, I'll spin this to the side here, maybe somebody can yeah. see it here, but. Sort of rotate. Swoop. So basically, yeah, right here, I'm built onto the top handle here, it's just a little uh, 15 millimeter rod, just pointing out, uh, and then you can put your monitor mount onto there, and that allows you to easily uh, articulate the monitor back and forth, any direction you might need. But. Let's say you're like, I don't need this big top handle. What is this? I don't need this small top It's handle. a small camera. Why are we just putting a bunch of stuff on it, making it big? Exactly. Well, what I have in store for you today. <laughs> Embrace yourself. It's just a bunch of me trying to get this off here. <laughs> um, you can swap to, this is basically just the monitor mount. You can drop the entire top handle, keep it real simple. That's cool. Slide this guy in here. And then, 
Ooh. Okay, so it'd be kind of like a cold shoe mount almost, where Somewhat, it just yeah. kind of slides in. Uh, oh, is it slide in one way or slide in both ways? Both ways. Okay, and is there a there's a uh, safety lock in here, though? Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's this little button here you press. That gotcha. Way it fits gotcha. It's not just gonna, not just gonna fall off. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Leave it to one camera though to provide that. Yeah. Shout out, WC. They make really nice, expensive accessories. They do, but they're built to last. These things are sturdy. This whole camera is sturdy too. I yeah. mean, it's very lightweight and compact, but it just feels like uh, it can survive a crash. So that's good. Yeah. Um, yes, and then just since we while we're at it, your last little accessory that you can slide in here is just just a cheese plate. Um, I recently put this camera on my Movi, and this cheese plate is nice. It just kind of gives you oh, nice for that top rail. Yeah, yeah, something to put something to put more stuff on. Totally, that's really it. So yeah, it's great for like the movie top plate if you're doing something like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Do we want to try to quickly show them what the uh, top of the camera body looks like here? Yes, because that is your interface. Yeah, let's swap camera angles here. Um, I'm gonna throw it a commercial just for one second. There we go. So, Look at that. It's good. It's in focus. We're seeing it. So yeah, this is your uh, your monitor that's built onto your camera here. And as you can tell, you'll probably definitely want to get an external monitor to kind of help with that. Um, Eric, do you want to walk us through some of the interface yeah. here? So yeah, I mean, it's just like classic red, it's all touch. You can touch everything. Um, yeah, this is your, your viewing space here. I would say it's, it's really small. It's it almost unusable. It's great for just a quick reference, which is kind of what you'd be doing with this camera anyway. Of course, that's why I'd recommend the five inch monitor. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great, it's full touch interface. If you have a card in here, this little A cam here, it's also your record button. Um, yeah, you can just scroll through here. It's all of your um, all your settings, just like Classic Red. It is like the Classic Red interface. It's kind of a yeah. more compact package. I'm surprised they were able to even fit like the histogram and everything on yeah. here too, and some levels as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, yeah. it's very tiny. And there <laughs> is a built-in mic um, in this camera, which oh, Red is notorious for not adding. They are. Um, now you've got levels. You should be seeing some audio levels on here. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, all that stuff, all your normal stuff here. But what's great is that it's got this brand new menu system that um, does take a little bit of learning. There's definitely a learning curve with this camera uh, in terms of it's, it's a little bit different than Red's earlier stuff. Um, so I mean, you can go in here, all of your project settings. So you've got your 6K 17 by 9 is using the full sensor, um, 2 to 2, 4 to 1, 16 by 9, and you can go down all the way to 2K uh, 17 by 9. It does window the sensor, so you do get pretty tight on that 2K. Mm -hmm. But what you can do with the 2K is then go to 120 FPS, which is great if you're right. into that. Yes, and I think um, 60K at or 60 FPS at 4K. Uh, yeah, and then I don't think there's and there's no slow mobility for six for full six K. It does do thirty nine uh, frames per second for our European uh, friends. Yes, actually, one thing we did gloss over here: the fact that it the reason that it only does six uh, K, uh, basically forty FPS, it's a global shutter. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you don't get that rolling shutter effect if you are moving the camera around. It's none of that jello. Yeah, so we got rid of that jello effect. Um, for those who aren't familiar with global shutter, because it's not very common, I, the only other camera I can think of off the top of my head that has global shutter is one of the Phantom cameras. Right. Which you're looking at at least 100 grand for one of them. Ultra slow mo. This yeah. is six grand for global shutter. Um, as far as I know, it's the cheapest global shutter camera you can six get. Six grand or 500 a day at Camera Master. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this global shutter. So main thing, rolling shutter is standard in most. DSLR, pretty much everything. I mean, the Alexa Mania's got mm -hmm. it, all the other Reds have it. So th every frame that is being recorded, it's taking it from the top down. So as you spin back and forth, you get this kind of jello effect because it's still reading the frame down at one at a time. Yeah, the A7S is notorious. Oh, for man. Some, some of the worst yeah. rolling shots. Yep. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, with this, you, can, you don't get that. It's capturing every frame at the same exact time. Um, every pixel is being recorded at the same time, so you don't get that jello effect as you're spinning around. So, pretty solid. Um, so yeah, that's the main reason it doesn't go to the higher frame rates. At least I think you know global shutter is pretty new for red, so I think they're still mm -hmm. working out some kinks. And maybe in the in the future they'll be able to work it out, and we can do 6K at 120. Yeah, global shutter. We'll oh see. yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah. I think that's a great segue though to start talking about some of the, uh, what type of footage we can get with this. Um, yeah. Eric has uh, been gracious enough to provide us with yeah. some footage that he shot uh, the other day. So we're gonna cut away to uh, some test footage of the Komodo uh, and uh, take a look. <laughs> and I was like, well, of course, I've got to shoot this with the Komodo. <laughs> um, uh, really just trying to monetize my dog. Uh, so. Of course, of course. All about the Instagram likes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, while we're at this top-down angle, too, let's talk briefly just a little bit about the Zeiss Otis lens that we're modeling with here. Uh, uh, yes. The Otis lenses are new to Camera Ambassador here. We're super psyched to have them. Uh, we have a set that includes the 28 millimeter, the 55 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter, and all of them are cinemodded uh, that come with this gear ring here that has your standard 0.8 millimeter pitch. Uh, so this can attach to any follow focus uh, that you can conceptualize. Uh, it'll it'll be there. So um, yeah, these lenses are great. They're technically photography lenses, but with the Cinemod Edition, we now have the gearing and we have a D-click aperture, which is great uh, in case you do any aperture racks while you're filming. You're not gonna have that standard photography click between different apertures, um, or just to keep it smooth and make it feel like you're playing with a cine lens, uh, the click is gone. Kill the click, as I always <laughs> say. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the 28. Uh, most of this- Ah, uh, okay, let's put that back in there. Yeah, that there we go. Um, we, uh, I think most of these uh, can go down to, uh, they all go to a 1.4, so that's pretty incredible. And it's Zeiss, so yes. you're gonna get that, you know, uh, top of the line optical quality that those Germans are known for. Um, yeah, so I even mean, at a 1.4, it's not gonna be that soft. That was the purpose of that. Uh, yeah, of that. they are <laughs> very sharp. I'm actually highly impressed with these lenses. Uh, I've used them a little bit in the past couple weeks and just, uh, they are basically, they are essentially master prime glass in a photo lens. So you can uh, spend five grand on this lens instead of 30 grand per lens. Um, so it's just, even at 1.4, when you're, whatever's in focus, that little sliver of uh, image plane that's in focus, it looks beautiful. It's very soft. There's like almost no uh, optical distortion with these lenses. Nice. They're just, they're just beautiful. Yeah, just really nice. You notice any breathing with them? No, almost no breathing. Yeah, yeah, that's really they're nice. pretty great. I mean, for a photo lens, sure. modded to work with video, they're very impressive. Yeah, I love them. Let's uh, let's cut back to this wide here um, and talk a little bit about uh, power. Yes, do you love me for power? All right, oh. power. All right, so yeah, power in this little guy. So right now we've got it plugged into AC power, as we call that. Um, but red, once again, moving away from proprietary film stuff. Well, I guess it wasn't proprietary in the past, but you had to get like the red specific mounts, um, yeah. the batteries and stuff. Now you've got the Canon BP900 series batteries, which as far as I know, the C100 is the first camera that really kind of ran off that. Mm -hmm. So you got these, it's got two slots on the back here. Let's see if I can spin her all the way around. And these are basically just the standard Canon uh, cinema camera uh, batteries for it. So you've got the indicator to tell you where your percentage are of power. Um, I really dig these batteries. They're long lasting, they're, they charge quickly, and they're pretty common nowadays. So it's nice to kind of stray away from the more traditional like V-mount or gold mount setups that most RED cameras would use before this, or I guess all RED cameras would use before this. Yeah. Uh, and again, just going with RED's mission of keeping it compact and lightweight and easy to work with, these are definitely the, uh, yeah. the batteries of choice. And I mean, as far as the Komodo itself, I mean, this this is a fully running camera right now. Yeah. And it's this big, it's a full cinema camera shooting 6K. So, yeah, it's got these two battery uh, spots. They are hot swappable, which is amazing. That's nice. Um, it will always drain the left one first, then jump to the right one. Um, so let's say your left one's about to die, you can just pull it off real quick, swap another one in there, boom, you got, you got full batteries. Keep moving, just keep on moving. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so hot swappable, uh, just a great thing. Otherwise, you've got just this little AC uh, power cord here. Um, once again, like I said, we got the wooden camera package here. Um, a big fan of their stuff. It's just high quality stuff. So we've got this v or gold mount plate here, actually. Um, it literally just plugs right into this AC port, which I'm not going to unplug because it will power it on the camera. It will the lose moment. power, yes. But um, it's oh, just got this little, little plate little here that dummy. slides. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, so it's essentially, it just slides right into this port here. Like so. And then you can throw a gold mount on there. And boom, once again, keeping the form factor pretty small. And very like small. A, yeah. a slim gold mount on here and you're good to go. It's good to note too that this gold mount battery depth in the back here has three different PTAP uh, power outputs. So to power more accessories, tear deck, monitor, Cinetape, whatever you're rocking with on that day, all right back here. All right, we have our first question actually. Fantastic, keep the questions up. coming. Um, Challenge us, right, stump three. us. And the question is, was the footage that was shown earlier color graded or was it straight from the camera? It was lightly color graded. I am not a colorist by any means. Um, but yeah, I did color it just a little bit. I basically just added a little bit of, I just did a rec, or a, just a rec 709 conversion LUT, just from red log to rec 709, and then just added a little bit of uh, yellows and those uh, mid tones there, and that's really it. Nice. Um, it looked good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I'm not in colors. So. <laughs> and what did you shoot that on again? Or uh, like resolution-wise, was that at full um, 6K? So that was 6K. So I actually did shoot that in ProRes, uh, mainly because I'm still running a 2014 MacBook Pro uh, and sure, 6K sure. raw, <laughs> and that computer do not get along well, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, so that was just uh, ProRes, and ProRes, it will use the full 6K sensor, but it is limited to 4K total. So that is, those were 4K ProRes files. Oh, interesting. So there's yeah. no crop factor when you're shooting ProRes on 4K? Yes. Okay. So it's using the 6K portion of the sensor, but it is only getting a 4K signal. Gotcha. But yeah, so you're getting a solid 4K ProRes because it's down the 6K sensor to 4K. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, it was lightly graded. Nothing crazy, though. We just happened to get some really nice uh, golden hour last night. So Hell yeah. It worked out nicely. So yeah, any other questions? Or? Yeah, keep the questions coming. Anything yeah, else you want to throw in there? Hit us with whatever you want. Oh, also... That was that footage was shot with the Atlas Orion 32 millimeter. Uh, that lens is going like hotcakes right now. We cannot keep that in. All the Atlas Orions are really yes. popular. Everyone They're loves that. Some great. affordable anamorphic lenses. Yes. Give me um, more of them, please. The <laughs> only issue is I did have to de-squeeze in post. There is not a native anamorphic setting within this camera yet. Um, but the main thing is this camera is still in beta. Um, like they came out. With the camera, you had to direct, you had to uh, contact Red directly to purchase it uh, through the beta program. Um, when you turn this camera on, it literally says "Warning Beta." Um, I did just update from beta 1.0 to 1.1, uh, which already gave you a bunch of improvements, uh, mainly in the form of SDI outputs. You can now kind of modify a bunch of your SDI mm -hmm. settings. Um, hopefully, beta 1.0. Two has got uh, built-in anamorphic, so I did have to de-squeeze that footage in post, sure. which was a fun workflow. Let's briefly talk about some of the uh, ports that are on this camera here, because there is SDI out, but there is unfortunately no HDMI capabilities, yeah. um, which is kind of a bummer. Um, however, I mean, SDI is more secure. Some argue it's a better signal, so I can see why they did that. Uh, but just to keep in mind, when you're, when you're pairing this with any type of uh, external monitoring or a Terra deck, be sure that you have uh, SDI options available for that. Um, yeah. So it is just, um, it's really simple here. It's literally just a DC power port in. Uh, you've got this SDI, it does do 4K SDI out, so you can run to an external recorder. Uh, you can run it with one of those Atomos uh, monitors that everyone knows and loves. Yeah. Um, so you can record some 4K SDI to that. Um, and then the last port you have is an EXT port, which there isn't a lot that plugs into it at the moment, but we do have this um, expander module, which does give you, this plugs right into this EXT port here. And this gives you GPI, GenLock, and timecode, as well as the standard four pin control that Red has always had. Um, so if you have this on a gimbal or something, you can, like the, the Ronin 2 has that control uh, cable that plugs right into the, the, the gimbal itself. Right. So, you so you can, can easily run and so stop. Can, Yes, yeah. so you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is great, so it just gives you uh, time code and all that stuff, because I think a lot of people are going to be using, you know, 
more than one of these cameras on set. So you just throw this on there and it's got an easy way to sync all your cameras up so you're not doing all that nonsense in post. Yeah, yeah. Everyone loves to do. There's a, this isn't really a port, but there's this really cool little thing over here. Maybe we could talk about it a bit more, but uh, what is this uh, Wi-Fi capability Ooh. that comes with this camera? Yeah, so Wi-Fi. Um, the one thing we all love in this right world. Here. Yeah, so, <laughs> the one thing we all rely on. Let's just um, turn this Wi-Fi on on this camera here. So this camera has built-in Wi-Fi. Um, it will create its own Wi-Fi network, therefore allowing you to connect it to your phone. Um, and what they've done, which I have not had the chance to mess with quite enough yet, you can actually can make its own Wi-Fi network that you can connect a computer to and then through some weird IP address and router settings things, you can give someone the IP address that this camera creates and someone in France could control this camera that's sitting right here. That's cool. Via their computer. What a, which the, is a COVID control camera. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's great. So if you're, especially now in 2020, where you just can't have a bunch of people on set, um, what you can do is just turn the Wi-Fi on this camera and so let's say your creative director is, like I said, let's say your creative director is over in France for some reason, but you're doing this shoot over here in Chicago. You can just uh, give them that IP address and they can literally have a feed of the camera and they can, there are two different feeds that it creates. You can give them one that gives them full control of the camera um, or you can give them one that just lets them monitor it. Mm. Uh, and you've got LUTs and all that stuff you can apply to those feeds. Do you know how many people can hop on that Wi-Fi channel at once? I don't off the top of my head. Um, I did talk to one of the red dudes about it and he said right now it is limited to, they haven't pushed it more than past like six to 10 people. Oh, that's a lot still, that's um, a lot. But still, I mean, I guess in theory, if they can prove upon it. Sure. Give you we also start running into that like, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, if you're handing out monitors to everybody on set and you know, everybody, all, all clients, all like art directors, everybody has like a say in what's going on. It can get, it can get a little much. It can get rough. But yeah. 10 still a lot though. That's, that's crazy that, that, that everybody. Yeah, can, uh, I can't confirm that, um, but something like that. Sure, but yeah, sure. So you've got this little Wi-Fi antenna on here, a pretty impressive uh, signal range. Um, I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. So I don't know if I, how many people are familiar, but in the past, um, the red cameras did have Wi-Fi, and you can use this app called Full Control. It was $150 for an app um, that would allow you to control the camera. Now they've gone with, they actually worked with the guy who created that app and worked and made a free app that works with this camera. So now you can connect directly to the camera and have full control of the camera, almost like the, they planned it that way, <laughs> full control. Um, but it is called Red Control, and uh, just working out a little kink here. Let's see, let's see. Do we want to jump back over it? Uh, no, we'll hang here for a <laughs> sec. <laughs> Another reminder, if you have any questions, please let us know. We are yes. happy to answer them. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A period at the end. Uh, however, any questions now are, are more than welcome. Just wondering why I'm not getting the feed. I've got connection to the camera. I've got audio. I do not have a signal for the actual video. I mean, that's what happens in the live demo, you know? It's that's just, true, uh, yes. it, it works off screen, and then as soon as you get the cameras rolling. We're pulling an apple here. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm, though, that we are seeing uh, yes. the histogram and levels on the phone. We are indeed <laughs> seeing the histogram and levels, just no actual <laughs> signal here. Um, let me see, let me see. Well, either way, so it gets the point across. So you have this app here. Um, not entirely sure how well you can see it, but You've got to go and bring it up a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, um, for some reason I'm just not getting a feed of the camera right now in terms of video, but you do have literally all of your settings are right here. Um, so I can go in here and I can say, oh, I, you know, it turns out I want 4K. I just changed the camera to 4K. Look at that, it did. 17 by nine. It changed to 4K. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna go a little bit lower on the size, so we'll do 400. Boom, done. Look at that, it changed. So Can confirm. The latency is pretty low as well. It, it is, it's very fast. Pretty yeah. quick, I am connected to this camera and I am about three feet away from it, so. <laughs> but I mean, I you, basically as long as you're within pretty good eye line of the camera, it's this is pretty solid. Um, but yeah, you can go through here, you've got all your LUTs. Um, you can literally change what LUTs are being seen on here versus on the camera versus on the Wi-Fi feed that someone might have over in France. Um, 
coolest thing is we don't have, actually we do have, we can throw, this is my favorite thing in the whole world. Got this one. Cool, cool, cool. So if you are running a native Canon L series lens, you do have autofocus control. Let's see. Let's make sure this is on. Autofocus, where are you at? Again, different menu settings than previous uh, reds, so it does take a little bit of learning. They seem to have moved the autofocus setting. <laughs> Autofocus would be great on a crash cam like this, though, since you know yes. it's designed to like capture action happening rapidly and sometimes unpredictably. Um, so to be able to kind of quickly and easily figure out where your plane of focus is and kind of let the camera take control of that is, is very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, when you're shooting more of like a, a conversation scene or, or, or dialogue, you don't really want to have autofocus turned on so you can have control over that. You can have your own creative control when it comes to what's going to be in focus or not. Uh, but yeah, if you're throwing these, you know, um, like we were talking about with Mad Max earlier, putting them mm -hmm. on a bunch of different cars and trying to capture different things happening around, it's good to kind of let go of some of that responsibility of, of making sure things aren't focused and kind of trusting um, these more advanced like autofocus features that we're seeing. I was really yeah. impressed by like the C500 autofocus oh, when that came out. Like that's, that's cool. And I, again, I don't think autofocus is going to take over, you know, traditional focus pulling, uh, but I still think it's a really useful tool and like every new generation of camera, it becomes more and more accurate and faster and, and smart. Yeah, and so this is the first time RED has ever done autofocus. Um, they have admitted that it is, once again, still in beta. I've already been pretty solidly impressed with it. Um, it's very reliable. Uh, it does have continuous as well as single. I don't know, that would explain why I don't focus. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it does have, um, Continuous autofocus as well as just single autofocus, and you can use the touch screen right on top here to actually pick your focus points. But if we can get this app up and running once again, maybe? I was yeah. thinking about it. Oh, it is thinking about it. It's also thinking about not giving me a feed. <laughs> I think that might actually, this might be an issue with the new beta update. Oh, update. there we go. Hmm. Oh, well. So yeah, we're still not getting video, but in a perfect world, we would see video, and we would actually have full autofocus control from the app here. Um, so once again, this camera could be mounted miles away, and I could still have autofocus control of it. Control the focus of the uh, lens, I could control the, the iris, all that stuff. And you said you can do continuous and just like setting it and walking mm -hmm. away, and so you don't have to worry about yeah. it changing the focus on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you can do just the single autofocus as well. Um, but yeah, Red said they are still working on it. It's their first time venturing into the autofocus world, um, and they've admitted that like it's tough. It's, they're still working on it. Um, but the nice thing is they're just going to keep pushing firmware updates for this camera as mm. more and more people use it. They're very open to feedback. Um, their beta program is still ongoing, and they're just getting tons and tons of feedback and just working on improving a lot of things about the camera. What are some of the websites or resources that you would recommend in terms of like getting a hold of Red or just communicating with other Red users to kind of share information and yeah. updates? Um, I mean, the greatest thing there's been like the Red, the Red forums mm -hmm. forever. They've been around forever. I mean, people are always talking on there on the Red forums. I'm blanking on the actual name of it it's right like now. Red users. Is Red that users. One? That's yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Red has always had crazy fan bases, so. I mean, there's always there's Facebook groups, um, Instagram pages and stuff. I personally follow Red Komodo users on Instagram. Ah, there you um, go. And you can get specific account. Yes, <laughs> that. And then uh, Jared Land, uh, the president of Red himself, is always posting just rants about things that he thinks. Um, mm. He really just speaks his mind in Instagram posts and just says, you know what, I like. Uh, he's just like, hey, you know, this is what we're gonna do next week with the camera. Just post like paragraphs of info about what they're doing, which is really cool. Um, you know, it's not like you have to go read an article or something. Sure, sure. So yeah, I mean that, and then yeah, there's a bazillion Facebook groups out there right now. There is one called Com Red Komodo Owners. Uh, it's a private Facebook group that you have to prove that you own a Komodo to be in, and that is where the firmware updates are currently coming from. Really? To yes. a Facebook group? Yeah. Interesting. So I had to Get join in private. I had to reactivate my Facebook, <laughs> which I was not using, specifically just to join a Facebook group to get a beta update for this camera. 
crazy. Um, but I am on beta 1.1 right now. Like I said, it is a bit of an improvement for sure. Definitely. Um, besides the fact that I actually do not have video over the app anymore. So. <laughs> I see you trying though, you know? Yeah, it's okay. Just, just re restarting <laughs> stuff. When in doubt, power cycle it. And then we have a link to both the forum and the Instagram page and the comments. Perfect. There you go. You can Love check it. out uh, some of these uh, popular Red Hangouts yeah. uh, on the internet. <laughs> uh, any more questions flying through? Um, if you guys have anything, again, shout it out. Just yell at your computer screen. Don't even type it. Uh, we will hear it eventually. Please do. Yeah. I mean, in the meantime, <laughs> uh, while anyone's thinking of questions to ask, I can go over a couple more accessories yeah, that we these, do have. These Red's accessories specifically. Um, this is a really nice hand grip here. Yeah. So the, again, Red. This is still a new camera. This so, is. Uh, there's the companies still just coming out with a bunch of accessories for this. Um, so this is one actually from Red directly. We got it with the camera. It's a little outrigger handle here. Got your standard 3 sixteenths screws on top. And this is nice because it does have an electronic connection. It does uh, have that classic DSMC2 uh, 16 pin connection or whatever that one is. Just as many pins as we can. As many as you can put on there. Give me all the connectors. There go. Let's unplug. You know what? Let's, let's take your hand out. Um, so what's great about this wooden camera plate is that you can script. slide this off of said plate and then boom, you've got a handheld setup right here. Um, I love this outrigger handle, especially when you have a nice lightweight build like, like this. Um, this does have the electronic connection, so you do have a start and stop record button right here. How heavy, it, how, uh, heavy is it right now? In a scale of like LaCroix cans, um, what are you feeling, like six? I'd say three, three to four full LaCroix. Three to four full, full LaCroix. Yeah. <laughs> I there do we have the, I'm being handed more LaCroix cans. I think... Uh, now we're talking papitas or we're talking... Uh, yeah. Now we have a lot of LaCroix. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> um, as we know, it is the film industry standard drink it on, is. on it's, set. Yeah, it's your standard metric scale too when it comes to weighing cameras. Yes. But yeah, I think the camera body uh, completely empty is t about two pounds. Nice. Um, like I said, it's a four by four inch cube. I also want to show up in a quick over up here. So <laughs> this is uh, one of the first generation red it's models the here. First generation. Uh, red. It is the first generation red model. Um, so so kind of saying how far we've come, yeah. uh, it's pretty incredible. This thing is definitely a case or two of LaCroix. <laughs> so we have elevated above a single can scale and we are now going to a grouping of cans. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's like, what year? This is like early 2000s, 2000, uh, I'm just gonna ballpark nine. Um, might be earlier. Might be earlier. Yeah, this thing is bulky and short. annoying, and the startup time is like three minutes yes. uh, to get this camera turned on. Like, it seven? Like, Ooh, I was yeah. close. I was close. Not bad, not bad. I think The Office was in its fourth season then. <laughs> Simpler <laughs> times, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, but minus just the batteries themselves, this is the whole camera. I mean, this is the camera body. Um, it's literally when I first took it out of the box, I was overwhelmed. I was underwhelmed. Overwhelmed. I was like, "This is smaller <laughs> than I thought." It's, I was. I was. I, I, my whelm I was evened whelmed. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just a, an average amount of whelm. Um, yeah. I mean, this is this itself. I mean, it's. I could throw this pretty far. Do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do not tempt me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's insanely light. I mean, you can put this on the smallest of arms if you put just a nice lightweight lens on here. I personally have loved pairing it with the Armadid Leica R lens sets. Mm, yeah. I thought I had some out here. I do not at the moment. Um, but yeah, you just throw that RF to EF adapter on here, and you throw like a nice lightweight, like old vintage modded photo lens on here, and it almost adds no weight. Um, it's just, it's incredible. That's pretty cool. How lightweight it is. I actually, I personally own the, I just got the, Z, the Zune Queen 3S. Um, just one of those small like, handheld gimbals related to like the Ronin kind of deal. Oh, sure. Deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, this camera's perfect for that. Oh, yeah? It's literally a Yeah, match. I guess any like stick heavy. gimbals, yeah, would yeah. Like, really uh, benefit from a body like this. 
I'm gonna drop a uh, link to those Leica R lenses from our book site. Perfect. Well, Leica R lenses. lenses come in hot. Those are fun. Again, those are also cinemated, so they started off as photography lenses, and we have since declicked them. Uh, actually, we didn't. We uh, outsourced it to what are they? They're Simad. Simad. Yeah. Ron, yeah, yeah. Ron. Shout out to Ron. Always coming in clutch. Uh, good thing that's just a base plate. <laughs> um, and so all of those uh, photography lenses are cinemated, and again, you have the gears and you have the deep clicker. Um, yeah, I think that's probably that comes. And it has a ninety-five. Oh, a that's 95 right. mil uh, front ring. Yes, so it's clip on mat boxes. Easily adaptable to mat boxes things of that nature. Uh, and it's standard size across the board, so you don't have to worry about getting different step up rings or step down rings to adjust to different lenses. Yeah, it's great. We've so just got our second question coming okay. in. Perfect. Okay. Now's a good time. Ooh. Now's a great Before. time. All right. Uh, have you tested out the autofocus capabilities, and how well does it maintain a sharp focus when tracking faces? compared to camera uh, in this other cameras of this tier? Yeah, so I have tested the autofocus a little bit. Um, I was honestly very impressed. I threw it on my Movi. Um, I just kind of walked around with it outside for a bit um, and just let it go. I was just like, here's a tree. Here's a person over there. Here's, here's infinity. And it was pretty solid. Like, as far as Red, this being their first kind of venture into the autofocus world, I was honestly pretty impressed. Um, and like I said, they just kept, they said they're just going to keep updating it. Um, I haven't personally tried face tracking or anything like that. Um, but uh, let me see here. Oh, I just put another PL lens on it. Um, <laughs> You're not going to get some autofocus with that. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I did, I did want to point out real quick that I did just put an RF to PL adapter on here and was able to get a cook on here. Yes. Um, very quickly, too. But actually, I can swap back real quick to tend to this autofocus question. Yeah, I can put away this yeah. cook. Got it. So yeah, autofocus, again, I haven't done really, I don't, it doesn't really have a face tracking kind of uh, setting on here, but it does have um, single and continuous. And like I said, the continuous, I was honestly very impressed by. Um, it does give you the option to switch between a small, medium, and large, uh, like focus window. So you can pick like, I just want this tiny little portion of the sensor here. Um, to where you can kind of just pick like a, a big section as long as it's something in that section is in focus, it's happy. Um, and of course, again, you can use the, the screen on top here to click and select where you would like it to focus. Um, I'm going to say we could swap back to the... You don't want to get overhead now. camera? Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah, go yeah, overhead yeah. camera. We'll cut the commercial real quick. Oh, it's this bridge right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're live. Rock and roll. We're just gonna get the camera set back up, and we'll uh, look at this monitor. Do some. Um, and we did also scoot it back earlier. From a scoot it back. Yes. Back yes. Forward, back, back, forward. Scoot it forward. we could do for this? Focus chart. All right, so yeah, there is, uh, I'm not sure how visible this screen is to you guys. Yeah, Pretty good? Very cool. cool. Yeah. So all right, you go to this autofocus, which literally says autofocus beta. Again, they're warning you, they're still working on it, but I think it's great. Um, so you just go to enable here, turn that on, and of course you've got your continuous and your single. Um, like I was saying, your size, you can pick small, medium, large, wide, or vertical. Because um, we, we know we're all about those Instagram yeah, story crops yeah, nowadays. Exactly. Uh, that's how we all shoot. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I love omitting most of the sensors. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you've got your small, medium, large, wide. Uh, we'll, we'll do medium. And then your position, center, you can change all this as well by just uh, selecting it on the screen. And then you do, this is kind of weird, it took me a minute to figure out, but you do have to click OK to start the autofocus. Oh, interesting. It's kind of like a, you're turning it on. You have to ask its permission first. Yes. So let's see. All right. 
Oh, I didn't put it on. Let me put it on continuous here. Because that's the one we're all wondering about. We are. This is a fun live test. I guarantee it does not do a good job here. <laughs> uh, no, I did use it quite a bit um, in the past before the update. I actually have not tried it since the update. I'm wondering if it has gotten better or worse or where we're at with things. All right, it's not doing anything. It's thinking. Oh, it is thinking, all right. Does it not know what focus is? Huh. Well, like I said, it's I, a baby. I, I can see <laughs> it moving. It wants to. It really wants to. <laughs> lens. I wonder if it's, oh, you know what? There is a list of approved lenses that this works with currently. Oh, this might not be on that it's list right particular. now. Can we look that up? Yes. Well, if you find yeah, it's a trick. Include that. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the meantime, though, you're taking a look at this uh, out-of-focus focus chart here. This is our brand new uh, fully automated focus chart where from this pedestal here that this camera is resting upon you can dial in where you would like the focus chart to travel distance wise and it'll travel for you automatically um, great for all, all of our COVID safety preps here where you don't want to be walking back and forth touching a lot of stuff um, this whole thing is laser calibrated too there's a little uh, laser on the side of the pedestal that never moves and that's always guarantees where you're measuring your distance from uh, there we go, look at that. We got an approved lens and it's just flying. It's flying Slowly. in the same way a baby bird learns how to fly <laughs> after jumping out of a tree a few times, but it's still flying. Uh, it is. It's falling with style. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, yeah. Story of uh, one winter sports activities. <laughs> uh, so this is a Canon 24mm um, L lens, L series lens. If you want to see this here. Classic, it's been around for a long time. Um, so yeah, we are in the continuous AF setting. Um, it wrecks my hand for a second, and then goes back. Let's try changing this autofocus window size, and we'll start. All right. It's rough. So if anything, this shows <laughs> you that it's not time to yeah. fire your first AC. And yes. that you should really come to set prepared with a focus puller. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is, again, it, it does say beta within the menu itself. Sure. Um, it is Red's first venture into the autofocus world. Um, I mean, there is no facial tracking, though. It's just through that window of select your focus. This is not going to be like any of the Canon C300 or C500 cameras. Um, It'll just autofocus to the size of the window that you set it, and as you can tell, it's still going to struggle through uh, some of the autofocus adjustments, even if you have a small or a large window. Yeah, so I'm going to try a large window and see what we got here with the large. Oh, I didn't hit start. You got to hit oh, that's start. That's right, and you have to. Yep. <laughs> I really hope they they fix. I don't like this start button that you've got to hit here. Anything? No. Bueller. There it goes. Kind Let's of. Let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah, it's great at going from close to far. But uh, and yeah, we have a comment. They're going to be keeping their AC on the budget for now. Good call. Cool. Great yeah. call. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's good. I mean, yeah, it's it's good. I think it's promising. I think it will work better in the future. But right now, I wouldn't rely heavily on it. Um, like, we're, like we were talking about earlier, it's great in those scenarios where you're throwing the camera like in an yeah. uh, action environment. You want to set focus someplace far, you want to walk away from it, let mm -hmm. the scene play out, and then come back and capture your footage. Um, yeah, so uh, we're reaching the uh, end of our demo here. If there's any other questions that you guys want answered, please let us know in the comments and we'll get to them. Um, we're also going to uh, end the demo with some of that test footage again to show you guys what uh, some of the image quality is like out of this camera, um, but until then, our Your hero. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Let's start there. We'll go back to that.
Oh, that's cool though. Yeah, you should definitely show that. Now that we've got that up and working. Yes. Oh, it is wonky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it off of this uh, continuous here. And for those who didn't hear, because they're watching the B-roll, what was the was there any revelation? Yes, uh, I got so a picture. We got we got image back up on the phone here, so you can monitor remotely. Um, Eric, do you want to like get a little closer and show them that yeah. that like built-in follow focus? Because that's pretty cool. All right, so yeah, can we get focus on there? Oh, I got you. Whoa, there we go. Yeah. All right, so so this is your uh, your your on focus. So this is your app here. So yeah, within the settings here, I mean, like I said, you can change everything. Let's change our iris to, uh, let's go to a four. It went to a four. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you can monitor everything. We're in ProRes right now. You can change your ProRes codec, 422-422HQ, all the good stuff. Um, if you go over to here, uh, then you hit one thing. There we go. Yeah, this is all of your, uh, your look settings. So you've got your 3D LUTs. Um, you can go to Rec 709. All that good stuff. I mean, it's really, you gotta spend some time with this app. There's so much I could dig into, but we just don't have the time to. But, like I was saying, main thing is you've got this little autofocus here with this little, this little wheel. Um, and it's pretty real time. It is. Um, really low latency. So, you can still hire your AC and just give them the phone. <laughs> uh, just tell them to bring an iPhone. Uh, it doesn't need to use the WCU4, any of that stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is, it's pretty impressive. It's one of my favorite things to play with. Um, and again, there's just a bunch of settings in this app you can change. You can roll, of course, we don't have a card in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a bunch you can dig into on this app. It's something I would definitely recommend, um, now that we've got our Komodos, we've got two Komodos. Um, you can book them and come in and try them out in-house for free. Yeah. So at Camera Ambassador, we offer free preps uh, as long as the gear does not leave the studio and as long as it's not going out on a rental order at that time. You can come in, you can try it out, you can demo some lenses with it, you can demo some other accessories with it, um, all for free. You can try out some of these new automated prep bays that we've been talking about. Uh, we have beer taps installed now, so that's cool. Uh, and uh, basically, you know, just a bunch of friendly staff who are here to help you and to answer any questions that you may have during your prep. Yeah. So yeah, I would recommend coming and trying this camera out. Um, if you are to rent it, I would say plan a day before you plan on shooting with it to actually learn the camera. Familiarize yourself uh, with it's everything. It's just a different menu system, all that stuff. It's, yeah. it's new, it, there's a bit of a learning curve for sure. Um, I, I'll, overall, I'm solidly impressed with this camera. Nice. I love it. I think it's great. Well, I'm solidly impressed by this gear demo, Eric. So yeah, thank you very thanks, much dude. for uh, helping out with this and for yeah, acting thanks. as co-host today. Thanks for having uh, me. On. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we'll be looking at the comments for a little bit here after this demo. So if you have any more questions, put them up in there, and we'll get back to you. Um, this demo is also going to be recorded and saved on our YouTube page. So if you want to go back and reference anything, you are more than welcome to. And uh, stay tuned for next month. We'll, we'll be demoing um, a new camera on this pedestal and talking more about some of these cool prep bays uh, that we have. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Uh, until next time, everybody.